let's look at lesson five, singing hymns of hope, interludes of salvation for God's people. In the last session, we were making our way through the scary seven seals. Um, as each seal is opened, another aspect of the Roman Empire is shown in its sort of catastrophic manifestations. And that was a really scary session. What John does, though, in each of these sets of seven is break them up with an interlude. And he does that throughout the book of Revelation. If you make your way through the book of Revelation, there's at least 15 hymns that interject in the middle of scary sections. And he never gives you unrelenting judgment. It's always cycles of visions of judgment that are broken up by hymns and blessings and promises to lead us, to give us courage to make it um, through this book and to lead us on our journey. And that's what chapter 7 of Revelation is. That's our scripture text for this. Um, and that will be an example of an interlude. And we'll use some of the same principles if you want to look at some of the other interludes of hope throughout the book of Revelation. So that's the important thing is John does not give unrelenting judgment. There's also interludes or visions of hope. And what these do throughout the book of Revelation is is help the people of God get an image of themselves. These are the, the sections of Revelation that most teach John's churches what it means to be the people of God. So he's using these interludes not just to break up the judgment, but also to shape people, to teach them how to be witnesses, to teach them how to be faithful, to teach them what it means to be a community of hope so that they will understand themselves as God's people who are being um, called and shaped and empowered to be witnesses as a community together. Um, so that's what you see going on in this vision in chapter 7 of Revelation. There are multiple images of the people of God um, and, and they're depicted then standing before the throne of God waving their palm branches. In another section they're de depicted in terms of this funny number 144,000 that you've probably heard a lot about. Um, in the final section of the chapter, they're shown um, being led by the Lamb to springs of living water and their tears are being wiped away. But all of these are multiple images of the same um, church, the same people of God, all of us who are called to be followers of Jesus the Lamb. Um, what can we know about John's churches, about the people of God? Um, we think they are pretty multicultural, um, and, and John doesn't give us as much information about himself as we'd like. I mean, we, we get glimpses of himself, um, but most scholars will say he's um, writing in a language that is not his first language. His Greek is weird. Um, it's, it's, it, it kind of sounds Hebrew even in terms of Greek. So um, some people, and I would be among these, would say that maybe John is an exile from after the Jewish war when Rome reconquered Palestine and exiled uh, many people, killed many others, took others as slaves. Maybe John fled or was kicked out of Palestine and, at that time and went north and um, settled in one of the cities of Asia Minor. But he seems to really carry with him memories of the Jewish war, whatever, whether he was part of it or not. And he seems to see himself in some kind of exile. So um, I think that's a good thing to keep in mind as we live in a multicultural world. Many people probably are um, participating in this study for whom English isn't their first language. Um, maybe, hopefully, your congregation consists of um, mixed ethnicities and diverse cultures and backgrounds. That's what John's churches would have been like as well. And he's teaching people that they are becoming the people of God together from all their diverse backgrounds. And, um, and they're this wonderful sort of multicultural multitude. Don't take the number 144,000 literally, like all the other images of Revelation, like the lamb, like the, um, the depictions of Jesus. It's not meant to be a literal image. It's just meant to be a huge number. It's 12 times 12,000. So John is showing us that the people of God is a very, very large number of people who are being called and formed and sealed. Um, that's probably imagery of baptism. They're being shaped as the people of God and being led on this Exodus journey. So this is um, one of the great visions of hope in Revelation. It's kind of like the New Jerusalem vision that we'll see later. It's, a, it's an early glimpse of that. Um, here too, the, the hymns and, um, and songs from this chapter, I think, are some of the favorites for many of us. So sing your way through this interlude before the scary sections begin.